I didn't see the message. It's recording. It's recording. I can pause it if you want. No, I would start recording. Okay. Tell me when it's ready. It's going. Good afternoon. My name is Joe Benelli. I'm an associate extension educator uh, with UConn Extension. Today's program is funded uh, in, by, by a grant from USDA NEFA through the Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. Today's discussion will be on farm business planning. Some of the there's some very important issues or characteristics uh, for a successful farmer. Uh, one is I believe that the farmer must have a vision. A vision is a realistic idea of what your business is going to be. Commitment is also very important. Running your business will take much more of your time than working for someone else, especially at the beginning. It's also important to be able to to be able to pr prioritize. You will have to set be able to set priority for the best long-term outcome for your business. Next is the ability to multitask. Any business, including farm businesses, will require a lot of different tasks that must be done throughout the season. It's important to be able to, to multitask to ensure that all jobs are done in a timely, complete manner uh, for, the, for the entire farm. The last would be the ability to communicate. I personally think over the years that I've worked with, with farmers uh, th throughout Connecticut and in the, the Northeast is the ability to communicate, I think, is very, very important. One of the important issues of communication, I think, is understanding the ability, you know, first to, to, to understand uh, what, what, someone is, what, what someone is saying as well, too. So, so communication is the ability to under, understand before you, you worry about the ability to be understood. Uh, as as well too, uh, that goes for not only working with with members of your family and but also members of the community, uh, your customers, uh, et cetera, as well too. So think about your how you how you communicate, and again the idea of of, commu uh, of practicing what I call active listening. Again, and, and to repeat maybe myself again here, but again active listening infers the ability to be to understand. Uh, before you worry about the ability to basically to be under to be for others to understand you uh, as as well as well too. Some of the other issues of of business planning, I think, is is also getting a sense of what some what what your your core values or what's important to to you and your other members of the family uh, as well too. Some of the core values I think that are important to can think about would be number one would be financial stability. Uh, for example. Um, is your goal to provide for family living needs? Uh, are you thinking about providing funds uh, for retirement? Are you also thinking about potentially keeping debt to a minimum uh, as well as well too? I think for many uh, farm businesses, uh, you know, borrowing money uh, may be something they need to consider for the growth of the business as well too. Borrowing also is not necessarily borrowing from from a from a a lender. It, it may be you know borrowing. You know, from other members of the of the family uh, as well as well too. So, when you're thinking about developing a farm business, be thinking a little bit about the source of of capital, the sources of capital, uh, the amount of of capital that may be needed to get your business off the ground, and also for your business to grow uh, as well as well too. I think the other issue on financial stability, I think, is also thinking about retirement. I know for a, for a lot of folks, uh, thinking for retirement may seem uh, a, a long way off, but I think thinking a little bit about you know how your business will fund your retirement uh, needs is important uh, as as well as well too. Uh, for many small businesses uh, that are proprietors, uh, you, you know they there may not be a four hundred one uh, a formal retirement plan program, so thinking a little bit about retirement funding, uh, you know, may be an important component. Of, of your business plan uh, as well as well too. Another core value I think is important to think about is, a, is for example, stewardship of the land, air and water. For example, you know, improving soil health, uh, using only sustainable farming practices. Uh, you know, whether you're considering or organic or organic certification or using conventional methods of of production uh, as as well too. But that may also come into play in terms of your core values. 
The other one I would consider would be the quality of life for you and your community. For example, uh, you know, serving as a mentor to other farmers. Uh, I find that working with, with farmers for over the many years is just that you can learn a lot in uh, with, with talking with and chatting with you know, other farmers in, in your community as well too. Uh, and as your, your abilities your, your grow as well too, maybe serving as a mentor to other people that are entering agriculture uh, as well. Uh, it may be considered a way of life for, you, for your family, for you and your family. Uh, it may be an issue of uh, but buying local. Uh, you know, more and more of our farmers here in Connecticut, for example, are, you know, are selling more retail, more selling more local as well too. And, and it was interesting the impact that COVID-19 uh, had on a lot of our, uh, of our farmers here in Connecticut of finding it basically their sales actually went up, uh, you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic because more and more of our consumers are looking to buy local. Uh, they're looking to, you know, know who their farmer is, uh, maybe concerned about the carbon footprint, uh, et cetera, as well too. So, so again, it's be a, be a matter of, you know, that may be something that you want to, to do as well, as well too. And lastly, it may be simply to make a difference. Uh, to have products that you are proud to sell uh, as as well as well too. In terms of determining your core values, I think it's important to determine, you know, what is important to you, you know, and take the time to write down your core values. Share your core values and ideas with family members and others that will be impacted by your decision to set up a farm business. Also, it's important that if your core values are different from other members of your family, you must reconcile how you will handle as a team differing core values. And again, understanding what motivates all involved is critical to this process. There are other important steps to consider, I feel, in the development of a, of a business plan. Develop a personal needs assessment. For example, how much money do you need to live on each month? You know, add up all your bills and what are your expenses on say on a monthly basis for food, for clothing, for uh, for insurance, for taxes, uh, transportation, all those kinds of expenses. And, and get, a, get an idea basically of what's going to cost you uh, to live for you and your family on a monthly basis. You know, say it's 4,000 a month, 5,000 a month, 7,000, whatever it is in terms of of what your out of pocket expenses are on a monthly basis. And then think a little bit about how much of this will be drawn from the business. If you're developing a business and you're looking to generate, you know, income from that business, you know, how much will that business generate on a monthly on a monthly basis and will that be sufficient to cover my family living needs as well as well too. If not, uh, you know, there may, may be, there be, may, you may have a part-time job. Uh, your partner or life partner or spouse may have a, 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 another job as well too, to support, you know, the family living needs as well too. But I think an important component of developing any business, any business plan, we think a little bit about the financial part of it. What are your financial needs? And can the business I'm thinking about developing, uh, support those family living needs? If not, would this be a part-time business? If it's gonna be a full-time business, maybe you need to rethink, uh, you know, the kind of business you're developing and what the future of the business may be relative to providing for my family living needs. The other important point to consider in, in developing of a business plan is joining member organizations. And I think you can learn a great deal by joining appropriate commodity organizations and other farm groups. Many farm, many uh, commodity organizations are available in Connecticut for different commodity groups, whether it's vegetables or fruit, uh, dairy, uh, et cetera. Uh, you know, joining, you know, for example, Connecticut Farm Bureau, uh, you know, being on the Connecticut Department of Agriculture, you know, email list as well too for information from them as well, you know, maybe help very helpful as well too. So join organizations, talk to farmers, go to farm meetings, gather all the information you need in order to make a, a good farm business uh, decision. Another uh, aspect of your business is making sure that you basically discuss all aspects uh, of your business with your attorney. 
uh, you know, making sure that your, your, your business will adhere to all legal requirements. You know, will there be any lease agreements, any rental agreements, uh, those kinds of things, making sure that they're done properly and legally. Uh, discuss your, your ideas with your insurance agent. Uh, if you've got a, a business now and, and are changing the business somewhat, it may be making sure your insurance agent knows, you know, what you're doing, how you're doing it. Uh, keep them informed. Uh, they're there to help you. Uh, the last thing you want to happen is, is having a problem on the farm and your insurance agent says, well, that, that claim is, you're not covered by that, by that risk or by that loss. So again, make sure you share with your insurance agent everything uh, that you're doing on the farm. Uh, is it retail? Is it wholesale? Are you inviting people on the farm? Do you have livestock? Do you have a petting zoo? Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So make, again, making sure that you're doing all the things properly. Uh, talk with a lender, uh, you know, about, you know, what, what your funds may, may be that you need. Uh, it may be that maybe now you don't need to, to borrow money, but in the future you may need to. So maybe, you know, meet with a lender to discuss with them uh, what, their, what their lending requirements are, what their needs are, and what it would take to make funds available in the future for either for operating funds. Uh, it may be for capital improvements. It may be, for example, to buy equipment, uh, land, buildings, et cetera. So again, talk with the lender to make sure that, that, that funds would be available if, if needed. And lastly, you know, talk to an accountant. Uh, you know, making sure that you understand the record keeping and tax requirements of your business uh, as as well. Uh, you've you've got, got a file with the IRS. Uh, you've, you've you've got you know maybe information that lenders want uh, as as well as well too. Uh, so again, uh, making sure that your you and your accountant sit down and discuss what your needs are, uh, and that your record keeping is it meets the needs of of the IRS. Uh, uh, local tax authorities, the state, the state, for example, uh, as as well as well too. Now we're going to get into actually the, the actually writing of the business plan itself. And a business plan is a an essential element to set production, financial, and other business goals, along with a plan to achieve those goals. So it's kind of that roadmap, if you will. Uh, to go kind of from the idea, your dream, so to speak, uh, to the to the entire uh, development of the business plan, including financials uh, as well, too. It can help you judge the progress of your business and potential areas that could be improved as well. And finally, it helps you measure results compared to your plan and keeps everyone working towards the same goals. Please note as well, that businesses require different plans through the life cycle, from a feasibility study before startup, to the expansion plan, to an analysis of other business changes as well too. So I call a business plan really a dynamic living document. It's not once and done, so to speak. It's there for you to review, uh, to, to judge your progress. And as you also make changes in your business uh, over time, then you would need really to update your business plan uh, as well, as well too. It must also be noted that the business, the business plan itself is an important document you can provide to, to your attorney, to your accountant, to your insurance agent, uh, to potential lenders, and also to potential grantors as well too. For example, if you're looking to apply for grant programs, uh, say grants from the Connecticut Department of Agriculture, they require to some degree as well too, uh, a business plan of some sort so they can, they can make appropriate uh, decisions as, as to who they're going to fund uh, with their grant programs uh, as well. I think that a complete business plan must have these, these six components. Now, maybe not all identified exactly in the same way, but I do think that a, a business plan must have this, this information. I've organized them into executive summary, business description, operations, marketing, management, and financials. The other question I get many times uh, from farmers or people who want to get involved in business would be, you know, how long should this be? Should it, is it, is it a five-page document, a 20-page document, a 100-page document? 
Then my answer generally is, well, it, it depends really on the, on your business uh, that, that you're developing. Is it a new business, an existing business, and how complex is the, is the business itself? Uh, it's really whatever it takes for that the, so that you can really decide or convey the nature of your business. I see a lot of business plans anywhere from a, from a dozen to 15 to 25 pages. Those typically are, are the average of what I see. Uh, I think it takes around that amount really to, to include all the information that you need to convey to the reader uh, as, as well as well too. So while there is no set amount, I think that 15 to 20 page limit is really what I see as minimum to convey the, all the information that, that you need. The executive summary really includes, is typically, I would say, one to two pages long. It provides a brief, cohesive overview of your business. Explain to the reader, basically, what you're doing, because generally, basically, the business, the person, the reader, doesn't probably know you and probably doesn't know a lot about your business you're, you're, you're introducing. So give the reader a brief overview of the kind of business that you're developing. Is it retail, wholesale? You know, is it? Are you growing crops? Uh, what kind of crops? Uh, those kinds of things. I think, and also, and another important component of the executive summary is a mission statement. Businesses, I think, are important to be able to convey. You know, how how do you define your business? It merges your set of values, your core values, and vision into a set of principles that will describe your business. It also communicates how and why your farm business exists and how you want your customers and community to view you, your values, and your, and your business. I suggest respectfully, you know, do a Google search on, on various agricultural or farm business mission statements. I think get, you give you a, a pretty good idea of how to develop a mission statement for your business. Again, this should not be long. Uh, two or three sentences, uh, I think, are sufficient to convey how do you want the public to view your business? Again, what are your values? What's your vision for the future? An important component of, of, the, uh, of the executive summary are setting goals. And I personally think all goals should follow the SMART concept. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely for SMART. Be specific, uh, you know, provide a specific and detailed description of, of the goal that you want, you hope to achieve. For example, who, what, when, where, why, et cetera. Measurable, state your goal in such a way that there's a way to determine if the goal has been, has been reached. How many, how much? Is it attainable? Is it realistic? Is your idea of are your goal realistic? You know, is it something you can achieve basically by by a certain time frame? And timely would be a specific time frame must be given. Someday or in the future will not work. Uh, be specific as to when you want to achieve a specific goal. I think the initial business plan should have anywhere from five to eight different different uh, goals. Goals can be both personal as well as business uh, as well as well too. But again, they must be very specific. When do you want to achieve something by? It, it may be a matter, uh, you know, you want, you want to uh, uh, erect a, a greenhouse. Well, what size greenhouse? Uh, what, uh, how large and by when, et cetera. So it's a matter then of saying, you know, exactly when you want to achieve something uh, and, and exactly what it is you want to achieve. So keep that in mind, SMART goals are very important. You're going to use SMART goals to measure uh, basically your, your, your level of, your rate of success or, your, or amount of success you're, you're attaining as, as well too. And these goals can change from time to time and will change from time to time uh, as, as well as well too. I think goal setting is very, very important, but again, they must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely to be effective. Next is the business description. 
the business description is a much more detailed description of your product and or service. Uh, go into the details in, in terms of exactly what you're, what you're growing, uh, et cetera. So a much more detailed overview uh, of, of, of your business. Another important component of the business description would be a listing of assets needed in order for your business uh, to function. How much land do you need? What kind of land, et cetera? How much tillage, et cetera? What about buildings that you, that you may need as well too? Uh, now this holds whether or not you, you already own the property or whether you got to acquire it as well. Here, you're simply brainstorming here, I think, in terms of what assets you need in order for your business, your idea, your dream to function. Land, buildings, equipment, tractors, trucks, uh, uh, you know, other kinds of tillage equipment, et cetera, that you may need as well too. So not only list what you need, to, for, for your dream to, to, to work or, or to reach, to attain your dream, but also the cost. You know, what, what would be the cost that you would need to acquire uh, this as well too? We'll be talking more about financials later on in this presentation, but here you're really brainstorming, I think, is what's, what assets do I need in order to, uh, for this business uh, to, to function and how much of an investment is needed for this business to function uh, as well as well too. And lastly would be legal form. Uh, for example, do you want to operate a proprietorship, corporation, partnership, limited liability company? These are things that you would need to consider as well too for your op for your business. Discuss these, these options uh, with a qualified attorney. Uh, there, there are issues, there are, there are attributes of various kinds of entities uh, I know a lot of businesses now have limited liability companies, LLCs, but again, there's features of, of other, of all entity types. And I think you need to, to consider all your options and pick the option that basically meets your needs uh, as, as well, as well, as well too. So options may be proprietorship, sole proprietorship, partnerships, corporation, either sub S or, or C, and then also uh, you know, becoming a limited, limited liability company as well too. And again, different states have different options as well as, as well as uh, one individual in an LLC as well too. So again, discuss those needs with a qualified attorney. Next, uh, in, in the business plan, it would be developing your operations. Here you will be describing basically on, on what you'll produce, how you produce it, and how much you will produce. More detail over and above the, the, uh, the business description. Within this section, expand on, on your products and be very specific. What about things like inventory management, licensing, permitting, and regulations you know, needed? Uh, for example, uh, certain areas, you know, are, are there any inland wetland issues? Uh, if you're dealing with food, you know, what about the new FISMA regulations or, or GAP certification uh, as well, as well too? Does a town, for example, require any licensing or permitting uh, for putting in a retail establishment, et cetera? Here's where you're trying to make sure that, that you're abiding by all the, 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 the local, uh, regional, state, and federal regulations uh, as well too. So you're, you can do what you want to do where you want to do it. Uh, also, things like zoning as well, too. What about any zoning regulations? Again, here you're trying to make sure that you're addressing all the issues operationally about operating your business. And, and lastly, what about any environmental issues uh, that could be encountered as well, as well, too, in terms of roads uh, and all those kinds of issues uh, as well? Also, review any risk management tools that will be utilized to manage risks such as crop insurance, other forms of insurance and enforcement of, again, food and work safety standards. If you're growing crops, uh, you may decide to insure some of those crops with crop insurance. Uh, if you're dealing with issues concerning, say, bringing public onto your property, you know, what, what about liability insurance relative to, to uh, uh, bringing people onto your property as well too? Again, this is where it comes into play here, talking with your insurance agent, your attorney, et cetera, to make sure that you address all the basic risk management tools that you need in order to minimize the risk 
uh, being in a, an agricultural business uh, as as well as well too. Next is discussing or considering your marketing options uh, as as well. I think marketing is really has two components. The first I feel is is market analysis. Uh, analyze the industry uh, in your up in your area. You know, do a so do a description and analysis of 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 the business. Is it growing? Is it expanding? Uh, et cetera. So talk a little bit in your market analysis of the industry in general, not for you specifically, but in in general the industry uh, that that you're that you're engaging in. Think a little bit too. Who are your target customers? Who, who would you define as your ideal customer in terms of what their needs may be uh, as well? Do a demographic analysis. Uh, that includes things ad addressing things like you know gender, uh, ethnicity, uh, you know uh, economics, uh, uh, age, etc. It ties into your target customer as well as well too. So. A demographics may be if your target customer is is a is of a certain age group, uh, is that is that industry is that target group expanding? Is it contracting? So you're trying to first of all to determine you know who your target customers are, and then analyze really the demographics to see is is that demographic growing, expanding, or contracting? I think that's also very important. Next will be competitive analysis. Who are your competitors? Uh, how many competitors do you do you have? Are they are they do they seem to be expanding or contracting uh, as well too? So who is your competition? Maybe also look at the region. Say within a five mile radius, twenty five mile radius, fifty mile radius. Thinking a little bit about your business and about who your competition is, uh, et cetera. So think a little bit about that. And and lastly, I would say, is there a market for what you want to sell? And is that market expanding or contracting, as an example, uh, as well as as well too? So, descri describe your industry, define your target ideal target customer, look at demographics. Is it expanding or contracting in certain areas? Who's your competition? And that ties, I think, into is there a is there a market for what you want to sell? Period. Once you've done the market analysis in general, now I would say you look specifically at your operation, your operation for marketing and sales. Success, I feel, requires the correct mix of product, price, promotion, and place. In other words, do you have the right product that people want to acquire uh, as well as well too? For example, are they looking for value added? If if you're a fruit opera, say you know grow apples, you know are you sell you as a, are public looking for apples or are they looking for maybe pies or things of that kind? What are they looking for in terms of products? And a lot of our farm businesses now are are adding value uh, to their to their uh, uh, what they're growing or producing uh, as well as well too. What about price? Are you competitively priced uh, as well? To how do you price your products? Certainly, you need to consider pricing that will cover your expenses and generate a profit uh, as well too. Finally, would be would be not finally, but next would be promotion. How are you going to promote or or advertise your products as well as well too? Will you be using social media? Will you be using a website or a combination thereof? Based on your demographic or target customer, it may be that that, that they how they find you will be through using social media, and or, or or not. So your the way you advertise or promote is really tied into who your target customer is and how they will learn about you. In my opinion, there's no question that now for a lot of our demo, a lot of our customers, using social media is critical. Having a website is critical to your success as well too. You know, certainly word of mouth. Also maybe periodically, you know, newspapers or journals as well as well too. But you gotta think a lot about, you know, how am I gonna promote my my product, you know, to to my to my target group. Finally would be place. Uh, and, and again, place would be, you know, where your where people would will, will arrive at basically to buy your product or service. Uh, 
now more are, are looking at online sales as well too. It may be delivery, it may be online, it may be you pick up, uh, et cetera. For example, in the last few years with CSAs, you know, sometimes now some farmers with CSAs are delivering to a central location is, is in terms of everyone coming to the farm location. We got to think a little bit here about is it the right product, either value added or not, at the right price relative to, to say competition, et cetera. Am I promoting correctly or properly or, or efficiently? And am I selling it basically in the right place? Or do I need to consider options for place like online sales, central delivery, uh, uh, those kinds of things? I think next would be ensuring product or service satisfies customer needs. You know, more and more businesses now are, are looking at, you know, customer surveys, et cetera. Again, make sure you stay on target, on point, making sure that your, your product continue to satisfy customer needs and you're changing your product mix or your delivery as, as the needs of your customers change as well, as well too. If you don't, your competition will. So again, making sure you're all, always monitoring appropriately what customers' needs are. Lastly, I would say determine the features and benefits of your product or service. Features are some, uh, something your product does. Benefits are what the benefit is of that feature to your customer as well, too. So I would say typically people buy on the benefits of those features. So when you're thinking a little bit about your marketing strategy or talking with customers, et cetera, be fully aware of what your, what your product features are whether it's a say a product or, or a service, but what the benefits are of that of that product to your customer as well too. So talk up benefits, but you must understand the features of, of those products or services as well too to be effective. Also part of, of, of marketing, I, I feel is doing what, what I call a SWOT, what we call a SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. I'm not sure who invented the SWOT analysis. Whoever did came up with a great concept. Strengths are those things that are internal to your firm. What do you do well? What do you do well? And it may be, maybe that you, you, you grow really well. You've got a lot of experience in the farm business as well. Weaknesses are also internal to the firm, the farm, but are things maybe that the firm does not do all that well. It may be some areas where where they you know they maybe need to improve you know what they're doing on the farm. It, it may be, for example, uh, it may be employee turnover, uh, and and you might say, well, well, that's something I have to work on to try to reduce the impact of employee turnover as a weakness. Opportunities are are those things that are external to the firm to the farm. They're external. They don't directly you don't have direct control over those opportunities. And threats, uh, like opportunities, are things that are also external to, to the farm. I think an understanding of a farm business strengths and opportunities can help the farm business to achieve goals, with, while an understanding of, of business weaknesses and threats can help to identify areas that must be overcome or reduced to achieve its goals. I think recognizing what, what one does well and what the, one does not do well is important to try to improve upon those weaknesses and hopefully maybe turning those weaknesses into strengths over time as well, as well too. All the weaknesses may, may pop up, but again, you're always trying to overcome those weaknesses and hopefully maybe hopefully turn them into a strength. Again, opportunities are things that are external, but it's basically saying, you know, how do I take, take advantage of that opportunity? Uh, it may be a change in the economy and it, it may be a change in, in growth in your area as well too. An opportunity may be that more and more consumers are, are looking to buy local from a local farmer, et cetera. It's how you take advantage of those opportunities, I, I think, are important, and how you react to threats that may come into play as well, as well too. Competition, added competition may be a threat. It's how you, I think you react to that. The company's not going to go away. It's how you react to the threat. It may be where you change your, your product mix. It may be where you change your promotion. Uh, it may it may change how you how you how you how you approach uh, dealing with those customers, but again, it's how you react. I think to that to try to reduce the impact of, of those threats as well too. 
I think doing a SWOT analysis is important, at least annually. It, it, it may be something you don't you don't change your business plan annually, but I personally think doing a SWOT analysis at least annually may be very helpful again to to turn weaknesses into strengths and and to recognize opportunities and and to try to figure out a way how do I overcome threats to my business as well as well as well too. Next would be management. Management is all about people. It's really the people aspects of your business. Developing policies and procedures. Consider also, I would say, consider an employee handbook that will include these policies and procedures. Dealing with things like maybe you know sick time, uh, you know uh, uh, being late to work, being not late to you know those those all those kinds of issues. You know what about vacation time, days off, sick time. Uh, 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 attire, uh, lang you know, those kinds of things. So making sure that 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 your all the employees are aware of what all the current policies are and procedures are for dealing with your employees. Determine what employee skill sets are needed for all the jobs to be done for the job to be done well. Many businesses require many different skill sets. Consider what those skill sets are and write them down. Write them down. Now, maybe one employee, uh, you know, may be handling more than one job on the farm, but try to identify all those jobs that are that have got to get done and got to get done well for the job that, for the business to be successful. Develop an organizational structure to allow tasks to be done efficiently. Basically, have a chain of command set up. It, it may be as you know, who's in, who's in command, who's in charge. Will it be will it be middle management, et cetera. So consider basically, in my opinion, that all employees must only have one boss up to up through the chain of command. So it's a matter of organizing a structure so that everyone knows, you know, who their boss is. And again, making sure the organizational structure or chain of command is set up efficiently. And lastly, I would say develop job descriptions for all positions, including employee management systems regarding recruitment, salary structure, et cetera. Every job, in my view, should have a written job description in terms of what that job entails, what the, what the issues are, and what, what, the, what the skill sets are needed to complete the, those, those jobs. I be also believe that, that when you're hiring employees for, for a job, make sure you share with them their job description. Ask them, for example, understand all aspects of the job description. Maybe even, you know, even, you know, sign and date it as well, too, to ensure that there's proper communication between the, the employer and the employee to make sure the employee understands what the job entails. Hopefully there's no confusion uh, later, later on. So, again, the management uh, part of the business plan is really all is really the people aspects of your business uh, for all your employees. Lastly. Or number six in, in terms of the business plan component or structure are the financials. And I find that, that some, many times this is probably takes the most time and provides the most stress uh, relative to developing uh, a viable, accurate uh, uh, business plan. Again, every business uh, must file uh, tax and information returns with, with local, state, and federal authorities, and uh, again, organized accurate records make this easier uh, uh, well-maintained financial production records you know help for management and control and again good records are are really a foundation of a of a of a profitable business i also meant i think i mentioned earlier as well too that good records or financials provide information necessary to secure loans and apply for other programs such as grants lenders want to make sure that you can pay the loan back Okay, so what they're trying to say is the financial will help you to document the, the, the loan request to the lender to hopefully document, yes, based on my, on my assumptions and my business plan, I indeed can make, make the payments as agreed back to the lender. Also, as mentioned, you know, many, many grantors also require a business plan uh, as part of other grant documentation uh, as well, as well too. So, so please keep that in mind as well. When you're applying for a grant, uh, this is an excellent way of documenting that that grant 
or the, the, the grantor as well. Also note that for a business, for, for an existing, for a new business, it may be difficult. You have really, you really have no historical data. So it may be a matter where you need to be able to look at benchmark data to support your projections. What benchmark data is really is information from, from other businesses such as, such as yours that document basically, you know, your, your, your business. Uh, with, the, with the benefit of Google now, we can Google, uh, you can Google really uh, benchmark data or, or production data uh, from a lot of land grant universities. I know, for example, I do a lot of uh, referencing to Penn State, uh, Cornell, uh, and other organizations as, as, as well. So, so you're thinking about developing a new business, you really have no historical data to rely by back on to, to document your, your, your business. Think a little bit about, you know, analyzing and researching other data that may be out there as well too, in terms of, you know, what is the average production, you know, you know, uh, you know per acre of, of, of certain uh, vegetable crop or fruit crop, et cetera. And again, there's a lot of good data out there that can help you to really to 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 put together information to document your your business your business uh, uh, plan. There are, th in my opinion, there are three basic financial statements you will you will need to to include as part of your business plan. First would be historical and projected income statements. This statement includes business income and business expenses over a period of time. It determines if your business is or will be profitable. So it simply is a, an in, a, what they call a profit and loss statement. It's all your income plus all your expenses for a given period of time, typically uh, on an annual basis. If you've been in business uh, before, uh, in your business, you would need to really uh, to highlight basically your historical data, maybe three years back, two years back, one year back, and then project say one year forward, two years forward, three years forward at a minimum as well to get a sense of where the business has been and where it's going. Also, you would need to, to, to produce historical and projected cash flow statements. A cash flow statement is, is basically measures all money going into your business and all money going out of your business for a given period of time. It's not the same as an income statement. An income statement is purely business income less business expenses. The cash flow statement measures all activity. For example, you know, money borrowed is not uh, income on a, on a business income statement, but, it is, but it's part of your cash flow. Money you're paying back is, is, is not on a, a P&L, but it's also part of your cash flow. Family living, for example, also is an item of expense on your cash flow but not an item of, of expense on your business income and expense statement. So again, cash flow is a measure of all money flowing in, less all money flowing out on a given, for a given period of time. It really, I think, enhances the documentation, say to a lender, or even to you, you know, can I, can I cash flow this business? Will I run out of money, you know, along the way as I develop my business as well, as well too? So I think that's a critical part of understanding your business dynamic is understanding or trying to ensure, will my business run out of money uh, during the season? Can I make payroll when I need to? Uh, can I, can I withdraw, you know, need for my family out of the business as well, as well too. It's a different way of measuring basically business success. The third item is, is what we call is also an historical and projected net worth statements. Net worth statements are basically a listing of your assets, what you own, less liabilities, what you owe as a given point in time. So on an annual basis, generally speaking, at the end of the year, if you're on a calendar year basis for tax reporting, you, you do it by, by financial statement or, or net worth statement as of say 1231 of the year. So at, at 1231 say of, of, of 2021, you would list out all your assets what you own as of that point in time, you know, less all the money you owe as of that same point in time as well too. The difference or what's left is called net worth. Kind of what's left. What have you earned? What really? What's your net worth at at the end at the end of the year? You again would do this. Say you you know three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and then also what you project for one year out. Say two years out, three years out as well as as, as well as well too. 
that's critical to determine basically levels of, of net worth. You're looking for trends as well, too. Is my net worth going up on an annual basis? Is it going down on an annual basis? If so, you know, maybe analyze, you know, why is that so? So again, as, as a review, you basically would need, in my, in my view, basically to, to have at your disposal or as part of your plan, three financial statements. There's income statements, projected and historical, cash flow statements, projected and historical, and then and then net worth statements projected in historical uh, as well as well too. Also, now we just want to get as we finalize uh, or end our our presentation today, kind of a, a listing of some resources and and some basic financial statement information. This is simply a slide uh, of a typical what we call net farm income statement. You know, those of, that have been filing a tax return before. It you know, looks a lot like a Schedule F in, in a sense. It also refers to on this document as an IRS Schedule F. It basically lists your farm business income plus expenses with a net farm income over a given period of time on say, an annual basis. Again, so either historical or projected, for example, what will, my, what will be my business income projected and, and expenses projected as well too. And what do I project, say, for a projection amount what my net farm income will be in that in that projection year. If it was historical, it would simply be basically your Schedule F or fat or, or similar document that you filed with the IRS in the in the last number of years uh, as well as well too. Here's a copy of a net worth statement and what a net worth statement would look like. Again, you can see here it lists all your current assets, your all your assets, what you own, plus what you owe. I also draw your quick attention to what we, the two values are what we call cost value and market value. Market value is what you deem those assets worth as of that point in time. You say you're gonna sell them on the open market or buy an appraisal. So that's what you simply think, what is that asset worth on the open market? You know, typically, you know, cash is cash obviously, but things like, you know, what about your equipment? Uh, what about, say, your livestock? You know, what about your real estate? So market value is what you think it's worth as of that point in time. So you're taking this balance sheet as of 12-31-21. It'll be what the feeling is those assets are worth as of that point in time. Uh, you can also hire an appraiser to do that uh, as well, too. Cost value is really what the cost was of that item, say, less depreciation and amortization as an, as an, as an example. So it's really, it's cost value, not market value. The example might be land you might've bought 10 years ago for hundred thousand dollars. And that's the cost value today. That's what you paid for it. But what's it worth today? It may be worth 10 times that today. So your balance, you can be either on a cost value balance basis or on a market value. Typically I find most balance sheets for say lending purposes or on a market value basis for accounting purposes, typically on a cost value basis. Next do document is a, is a statement of cash flows. You can see basically it's a listing of all your cash in, less all your cash out. The goal is basically that your business can't run out of money. It can't run out of money. So what do you need to do? What does your business need to do to ensure that it doesn't run out of money? Uh, it may It may need to, improve profitability. It may be to, to increase your borrowing capacity. Uh, it may mean to, to reduce family living draw, et cetera. But that, this gives you a sense basically is what do I need to, to ensure basically that my business will not run out of money. It's also used for, for projection. For example, if you're going to borrow money, uh, you, when, you, when you create historic uh, projected documents, you're going to factor in the extra monthly payment as a result of borrowing more money as well too. So again, the cash flow statement basically documents basically, will my business run out of money uh, as, I, as I project? The last spreadsheet to, or, or document to show you today would be, would be the partial budgeting form. Many times businesses like to look at, well, if I simply make a modest change to my business, how is that going to change my bottom line? You'll notice this document has four quadrants. Upper left is added income. Uh, lower left is reduced costs. Upper right added costs due to change. 
and, and, and lower lower right reduced income due to due to change. We're trying to do here simply in one document get a sense of if I make this one change to my business, how will it affect income either up or down? How would expense expenses either up or down? And does it add to my net income or not? This is, I think, a very useful tool, basically to get a sense of, you know, if I make this one change, you know, do I think it's going to add to my bottom line? And I think this can be a very, very, very helpful document in order to do that, you know, periodically as well too. You might have an idea in mind, and we'll decide one idea that I have. How will it affect my bottom line? Either increase it or or or, or decrease it or not change it really at all. It might it gives you a sense really of, of, of an idea and whether or not it's worth pursuing. In in general, then or in conclusion, I th I think you know once your this one is completed, then what? Again, you know uh, it's been said that difficult to manage what you what you do not measure. Uh, update your business plan as the need arises. And again, look to ensure that you are on track to reach your, your SMART goals. If you are not, ask why. Why, why am I not on track? Uh, what, what, what changed? Could I have controlled anything that changed? Is there something that I, I could have done differently to be back on track? So it's something I think it, it can be a very helpful tool, I think, during the season to get a sense of, am I on track? Uh, if not, why not? What do I need to change to get back on track? Maybe got to change my focus, uh, et cetera. And lastly, there's I listed here some helpful resources. The financial statements that I identified are, are from Iowa State. Uh, and, the, and the reference here URL is, is there as well, too. The partial budgeting form uh, is, is from Iowa State as well. Uh, there's also a couple other other publications I find very could be very helpful. The Building a Sustainable Business from, from SARE. Uh, the ERL was listed there as well, too. Also, there's a template for writing a farm business plan available at the University of Minnesota. So if, if you're interested in, in, in writing a farm business plan, I find this template for the University of Minnesota called Ag Plan is very, very, very helpful. And I think you'd find it uh, uh, very convenient to use. It's an, it's an ag-based uh, template for writing a business plan. It's a free, up to now, it's been a free service. Uh, they've got hints and tips and resources available as well, too. So I suggest, uh, respectfully, if you're thinking about writing a business plan, simply, basically, then uh, then go to the Ag Plan system and get a sense, basically, of, of how the system can be used to help you to write your business plan. And at the bottom of the page also is a SWOT analysis uh, from, from, Penn, from Penn State. And I promise the last slide is right here, uh, that if you have any questions about this presentation, about writing a business plan, feel free to reach out to me at joseph.bonelliucon.edu. Also, there are other resources available at the uh, UConn Extension website. We have our Connecticut Farm Mismanagement website as well, too. It has, has a lot of information regarding uh, uh, risk management uh, resources. And the last one, as you develop your farm business plan, uh, you, you may it may be important to reach out to other Yukon Extension specialists as well as well too. This website here gives you gives you a list based listing of, of all of the Yukon Extension specialists that would be available. So whether it's fruit, uh, or or vegetables, or or equine, or dairy, uh, et cetera, that all of these specialists are with Yukon Extension. And they all can help answer all your questions uh, as as well as well too. So without further ado, then uh, you know that's the end of, of today's uh, presentation. Again, any questions regarding uh, uh, business planning or developing a business plan, uh, feel free to send me an email uh, at at your convenience at joseph.panelli at uconn.edu. Uh, so without further ado, if there are no other questions. I will say uh, have a good day and everyone be safe and take care.